Welcome to the Postgraduate Pediatric Orthopedic Video Series. I'm Satal Shraida. I'm a pediatric orthopedic surgeon. And over the next 20 minutes or so, I'll take you through how to wash an infected hip joint in a child. After confirming the diagnosis and explaining the treatment to parent and obtaining the consent form, I will arrange for the child to go to theater. In theater, I usually position my patient's supine on table with a sandbag and the lower part of his spine. And this leaves the buttock dangled free over the sandbag and this will ease the dissection later during the surgery. It's really important to keep the children dignity at this stage uh, by covering their private parts uh, either with a piece of gauze or uh, normal dressing. Uh, for lack of a better word, uh, my team called this Alishraida Bikini. I usually use the chlorohexidine to prep. I start with the feet and going upward. I always prep the feet when I do anything in the lower limb. Uh, there's strong evidence to show that would reduce the risk of infection. After finishing the preparation, I usually use a utility drape uh, to put it under the buttock, which I've already prepped. Then I usually use uh, a U drape. Uh, I peel the sticky part. And I put it as low as possible on the child buttock. And the front part goes to the midline, just covering the uh, belly button, as you can see in this video. Later, I put the last uh, draping and I try to seal the edge with Iopan. I cut little strips of the Iopan. This is really important a step for all the hip surgeries I do. This will ensure the edge of the draping doesn't come off uh, the skin. It's really important to take your time to do this step very well, as if you put it too tight, it can uh, damage the skin. So take a few minutes to make sure that it's not too tight at the front or the back. Uh, now we zoomed in, uh, just to keep your orientation, orientation correct, the head of the child is toward the bottom and the feet toward the top. I always do a second prep after, uh, after I finish my draping, use the chlorohexidine again, and I'll wait a few minutes for the chlorohexidine to work. Uh, this is just in case we had contamination during a uh, draping process. I don't usually give antibiotic until I take my swabs or biopsies until the, unless the child is toxic or unwell. In this case, I usually give the antibiotic even if I risk that I'm not going to isolate the organism. Uh, my next stage is to identify my, la my bony landmark. This is anterior superior adic spine. And I bend the thigh to see where the crease of the thigh is. Now usually my incision around 1 to 2 cm uh, distal to the anterior subia attic spine, depending on the baby size. And I use the skinny crease uh, because it will hide the scar very well. Uh, this is a pretty small incision. You don't have to make it too small. You can make it bigger. And I strongly recommend that you'll see the, uh, the video of open reduction of a hip earlier in the book. Uh, before you, you watch this video because it will show you the anatomy better. Uh, next stage, you make your incision. I usually make it just above my line just to, prov uh, to prevent the theoretical risk of tattooing if you go through your line. I go through the skin and the fatty layer. Uh, and I, I usually utilize what I call it the gauze dissection. It is really very nice technique where you, you push the gauze between uh, the fatty layers and the layer underneath it and really create nice uh, space for you. As you can see here, where you can see the next uh, fa uh, fascia layer. I make it slightly bigger and I, give the incision, I utilize my incision fully. The next stage I'll try to find the dip 
between the tensor fascia lata and sartorius. Usually it is very distinctive and you can feel it with the tip of your finger. Uh, this is a small diagram showing what I'm looking for. If you look at the red arrow, it is pointing the area between the tensor fascia lata and the sartorius. Sometimes you can feel it easier by uh, the scissor tip. On one side you have the tensor fascia lata, on the other side you have the sartorius. And in between them there is a little dip where you can feel it by the scissor and you can open. If you open this area it takes you to a very clear plane between these two muscles. This can be a bit tedious process clear this plane very well. As you can see I'm using the tip of my scissor or the tip of my forceps and my assistant as I go deeper he or she uses the retractor to uh, keep the plane open. This is a closer view to demonstrate this step. As you can see, I'm pushing the two muscles apart. And soon, as I go deeper, the rectus tendon should become visible. It is that a uh, white structure. And I clear it further, uh, north and south. And I'll try to reach the la lateral end of this uh, tendon. Here I'm trying to reach the lateral border of the rectus tendon. This diagram showing uh, the anatomy of this area. The red arrow points to the rectus tendon and the green arrow is the lateral border of the rectus tendon where I use it as a landmark to go to the capsule. Here's the tendon, the lateral border of the tendon and as I push it away and I get my scissor underneath it and you can see the capsule start appearing in the view. It is that white structure which look inflamed. Trying to clear it better. And my assistant uses his retractor to go underneath uh, the lateral border of the rectus. And here what I see, what I'm holding with my retractor and um, with my forceps is the, for, uh, is the uh, capsule of the joint. I clear it slightly up and down. And you can see it's, there's some inflammation in the area. This is the capsule. At this stage usually I put my finger to, to sit on the capsule and I move the leg left and right to feel the femoral head moving from side to side and this is assure me that I'm in the capsule. Again you can see the capsule at the bottom of my wound, the curved arrow pointing to it. You can see part of it white, part of it slightly reddish. I usually aspirate uh, the joint before I open the capsule. I put my syringe and I move the hip again. You can see the syringe moving indicating that it, I'm indeed in the joint. I usually send cyanobyl fluid for cell count, a gram stain, and culture. In most joint infection, usually the cyanobyl fluid is more turbid than this, and it's not unusual to have front pus, as in the picture of this child. As you can see, the pus and the syringe, and there's a pus already filling the wound from a burst capsule underneath it. The next stage after aspirating the, uh, the hip joint is to find the capsule again and grasp it with the forceps, I pull it out, 
During this process, the, my assistant tries to push the femoral head downward and backward to avoid the damage uh, during the arthrotomy process. I usually ask the nurse for a fresh plate uh, because usually the capsule is a tough structure. This process must be done under a control to avoid the damage to the femoral head. When you open the capsule, you might cause a gush of fluid or blood, and this can impede the, uh, the direct visualization of the femoral head. If this is the case, stop the process, cut the suction, suck everything out, and try again. It's really important at this stage not to damage the femoral head. Here we go, you can see the femoral head start appearing, some fluid came out. At this stage use the suction to clear the vision. More blood coming. This is the stage where I always tell my fellows or my residents to take their time. There are certain steps where you can rush things, but certain steps in operations where you have to do them slowly. This is one of the steps where you have to do it really very slow. You can see the femoral head now. Open the capsule further down and up. And I usually take a small piece of the capsule uh, to create a window. I use a scissor here to take the window. And I send usually this small piece for histology. Again. Here I'm not satisfied with the window I created, so I'm making it even bigger. It's really important to keep the balance right between making adequate window to drain the joint and wash it out and not to make it too big, risking dislocation. Joint infection on its own is a risk for dislocation, so if you won't make the, your window or the capsulotomy, quite big, you could increase this risk. Once I'm happy with my window, I check the femoral head for any damage that caused by the infection itself or a, any iatrogenic damage that I might have caused myself. And in this situation here, the head seemed to be clear. Just making my window slightly bigger here. Again, I'm checking the femoral head. Over from side to side, front and back, I clean any fluid, then I start washing out. I usually use a, a small veniflon, particularly in small babies, where I slide it to the uh, medial recess of the joint. I leave the joint capsule uh, where I made my arthrotomy, then I sneak uh, the veniflon. Then I use fluid to clear it from inside out. I usually continue to clear, uh, to wash the joint until I get the clear fluid back. 
if it was fussy or or not clear this is not enough Many ask me how much fluid I use to wash the joint. I usually don't use a specific number, but as I said, I wash it until everything is clear. In older children, sometimes I prefer to use the NG tube. It is bigger and stouter, and you can sneak under the capsule to go to the inside. And even you can x-ray it because it has a radio opaque thing to make sure that you are at the very deepest part of the medial joint recess. Then when you finish joint uh, wash out, you wash your wound thoroughly. And I usually put a few drops of local anesthetic inside the joint and inside the wound and inject around the wound as well. Then after that, I will start closing the wound. I close the fat layer with Vicryl, a 2 or 3 o, depending on the baby size. And I close the skin with Monocryl. You might get asked in the exam uh, what kind of antibiotic and for how long you would use it. Usually the answer really depends on your hospital local policy. Most hospitals have local policy to indicate what kind of antibiotic and for how long. Uh, most centers now use two weeks of IV antibiotic, then four weeks oral. But this can vary between place and place. And again, the evidence behind this regime is not uh, very strong. Another common question is whether I use hepaspica or not. I don't normally. However, if I'm really worried about the hip because it's badly infected or the capsule was burst or shredded, I usually put hip spiker for two to three weeks time. Uh, equally, in neonate, uh, public harness can be used. But as I said, this is extremely rare. Uh, that normally, I don't use these uh, hip spikers. Uh, last question is that if you wash the joint, and after 48 hours or 72 hours, he's still not good with uh, inflammatory markers going up, temperature still high. Uh, at this stage, normally I request MRI scan just in case it is osteomyelitis uh, and there's a bone abscess burst into the joint and the septic arthritis was secondary rather than a primary. So these are the many questions that you could get asked in the exam. Then I usually at the end I put some steroid strips and small dressing there. And this uh, conclude our video for today. Thank you very much.